Hey YouTube, Mark Kaufman here, and today I want to show you a new knife that I got in the mail, and it's from a brand that I'm really not familiar with, and I don't think you guys might be either. This brand um, makes many different knives, they make a few different tools, but uh, I, I focused on this knife not only because of its simple design, but because I think the materials in this knife have a lot to offer the end user. Now, this knife here is from a company called With Armor. And I paid $75 for this knife, and I feel that it offers a lot in the end. Now, the box itself is really nice. It has like a faux leather uh, covering on the box. The box is not um, a, a very robust box, but it's better than most that I've seen. Under this box, you have this card here. Then the knife comes in a bag like this. And then you have their warranty information and a little information about the brand. So I will hold this out like that and you can pause it and read it. There you go. So if you wanted to read a little bit about the brand, there you go. And for me personally, I saw this knife online and it was either gonna be this knife, a code four or a titanium backlock Boker Plus. I didn't really like the Boker Plus because the steel was 440C. I have no problems with 440C, but for the money, I was like thinking to myself, I can do a little bit better. The Code 4 was almost $100, and I didn't really want to spend that much money on a knife. Now, this was a little bit less, not as much as the Code 4, but this is the With Armor Storm. Um, and, and it is the Storms, I'm sorry. Um, I saw this knife and I thought this was very simple, very simple. And then I saw a video on YouTube about this knife and I said to myself, wow, it's really compact and it's very thin. This is a very compact knife. Now it has titanium handles. It has removable hardware. You can disassemble this knife if you want. You have T8 in the pivot. You have T6s in the body screws. Yeah, T6s are a little small, but if you're careful, you can disassemble this no problem. You have a D2 blade here, and it is Rockwell 61 HRC. I haven't tested that, but they stamped it on the blade. It must be true. Uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit, but and then over here, you see a Roaring Dragon tactical design. Um, that might be the designer. That might be a branch that designs this stuff, but I like the design. And it's also designed in the USA, and the model number is WA-092SW. Now, I thought the SW stood for Stonewash, but this is all bead blasted. And you can see that I have a little bit of oil on the blade. And that's because when I got this out of the box, it had a little bit of surface rust on it. And I'm talking, I had to look for it, okay? I saw it finally after having the knife in my hand and looking at it um, in about 10 minutes. But with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, I was able to remove the little bit of rust that was there. And I just threw on some mineral oil on the blade. I'm probably not going to keep it like this always, but just right now while I'm using it and maybe even using it in the kitchen, I'm going to probably keep mineral on it just to keep it from rusting. Now, you have a stainless steel lock bar here, and it is a very, very smooth action here. You are running on bronze bushings, which is very nice. Now, this knife, I paid $75 for it. And I personally feel like it offers a lot for the money. You have stainless steel pocket clip, titanium handles, handle scales. You have a D2 blade. Now, granted, the, the uh, Cold Steel Cold 4 has S35VN. And I really haven't put D2 to the test. I've had many knives in D2. But for me, I've never really had one where... I've used it, I've abused it, I've tested it, and I've gotten familiar with it. I, I just never really liked it just because it's in everything. But for me personally, I wanted to give the steel a chance, and this package was really handsome. Now, I mentioned the thickness. This knife is very, very thin. And what do I have in my pocket that's familiar? Okay, I have a Pioneer X, 
And a Pioneer X is a Victorinox knife. It's 91 millimeters and it's pretty readily available. And I think it'll give a good representation of how thick this is. So I'm going to put it like that. And you know what? Let me just zoom in here really quick. And I'm just gonna put this on top like that. So that should give you an idea of how thick this is. It's about as thick to the liner, to the secondary liner here, maybe even to the spring. So if you have one of these, that's how thin this knife is. And personally, I find that to be very compact, very usable and very carryable. So this knife is a two-handed knife, okay? And then two-handed closing. I've tried with one hand and this thing actually swings a little bit. Uh, when you have that lock disengaged and I'm, I'm not going to cut myself. Okay. You can, if you're determined, open it one handed. Okay. I'm not going to be relying on this, um, I guess, uh, nail nick or blood groove to enable me to open it one handed. I mean, even when it's covered in oil, it's a little bit tricky, but I mean, it's just not going to be the way I'm going to open it. I'm going to open it with both hands and use it. But you can see that, yes, it's a very good sized knife. And that's the other reason why I picked it up. I thought this would be a great worker. Um, I've got a few chores around the house that are coming up and I need a blade like this. I need a blade that's got a little bit of length. And yes, I have the Schrade 304, but I wanted a backlock and I wanted to test out some D2. So this one kind of fit the bill for that. Now, the blade here is about the same size as the Schrade 304, but I'm gonna try and get these as size comparison as possible. It's just a little bit longer and I'm talking maybe three millimeters longer. Now, also while we have this out, let's compare it against the Pioneer X. And as you can see, yes, it's a lot bigger than the Pioneer X, but this is a full size knife. This knife is going to be able to do a lot of work and it's gonna hold an edge pretty darn well. I, I think D2 has been really thrown under the bus and it's now the new 8CR13 MOV. But personally, I think D2 is still a steel that has some merit. I haven't tested it in enough, um, enough to be really familiar with it, but that's why I bought this. Now inside the knife, we have a stop pin and that stop pin is going to meet right here and it's going to keep the blade from hitting against the back spring. So when it's pressed in like that, it's not going to dull the blade. It's not going to damage the edge that you put on this knife. Now, why did I pick it up? Well, I wanted a knife that was a backlock. Titanium handles looked great. Um, the design itself is very simple. It's very modern. I felt it was a good deal at 75 bucks with free shipping. Uh, it's pretty darn good. I think it offers a little bit more than like, let's say a Spyderco Delica or Endura. I think it would be a little more robust given the titanium handles. You have a lot of good things here. Could it be cheaper? Of course it could, everything could be. But for me personally, I find this to be right where I want it to be, about 75. If it was 65 bucks, I would be ecstatic, but 75 is not unreasonable. But also the box is pretty nice. I mean, it, we never buy a knife just because of the box unless you're a super collector, but I have to say the packaging isn't bad. So if you guys like this review of this knife, let me know in the comments. If you own one, let me know. All the reviews that I've seen of this knife were in another language other than English. And I wanted to put a review out there that really went over the knife and discussed the benefits, the downfalls of it, and to give people a better view of this knife. Now, I will be doing a follow-up video on this one. I'm going to be testing the edge retention. I'm going to be seeing how well the, the handles hold up with stress, like being thrown around and I'm gonna just use it. And I'm gonna come back in about a month and give you guys a follow-up 
and also let you know how the D2 steel is holding up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the With Armor Storms Lockback Knife. If you guys did, just let me know by either subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment, or liking this video. And if you are subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That'll let you know when I have a video out to you. So till the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.